to work at the Recurse Center back when it was Hacker School, and I am so happy to be here. Today I'm going to talk about the recursion limit in Python without any recursion or any limits, which you can use. Okay, so recursion. A recursive function is one that calls itself. Here's factorial, the really classic example of a recursive function, where n of 1 it returns 1, and otherwise we will take n and multiply it by the result of calling n factorial and n minus 1. So this works just the way you'd expect. Here's factorial of 10. Here's factorial of 500. Here's factorial of 999. How about 1,000? No. <laughs> That's not one. So instead, Python is throwing an exception that the maximum re recursion depth has been exceeded. What's going on here? Well, in Python, there's a recursion limit that governs how many levels of recursion you can have. And by default, that limit is 1,000. So we try a factorial of 1,000, and it doesn't work. It's too much recursion. <laughs> but hang on a minute. In Python, we can set the recursion limit at runtime with this function sys.setRecursion. <laughs> and here's a screenshot of the docs, and it says, a user may need to set the limit higher when she has a program that requires deep recursion. That's me. Great. <laughs>
to precede the recursion instead of uh, following it. So here we're keeping an accumulated product. When we get down to n of 1, we're done. So now we've moved the recursion into the tail position, and there's no extra work to be done for unwinding the call stack. Great. So now that the factorial function is tail recursive, we don't have to worry about the recursion limit anymore, right? <laughs> not exactly. In fact, not at all. We've written our function with the recursion in the tail position, but the Python compiler doesn't care about that. So the compiler is doing almost exactly the same thing it was doing before, and the interpreter is still building up the entire giant call stack, and we're right back where we started. Python just doesn't support tail call optimization. <laughs> <laughs> what follows here is some of the goofiest and most fun Python I've ever written, and I have to give credit to my co-conspirators in this, Paul Tagli, Monty, and Buddha, and Nikolaeva. So here's the idea. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> function and turning it into a loop. What we want is for Python when it gets to the recursive call at the end to, instead of doing that, update the, the values of n in the accumulator and then jump back to the beginning and keep going. <laughs> so we want to go to, basically. But that's silly because there's no go to in Python. <laughs> there's not a go to in Python, but there is a go to in Python byte code. So byte code is the language that the interpreter speaks that the compiler generates. And our beat today is with the compiler doing the wrong thing. <laughs> so the interpreter will step through the instructions that it's given, uh, and if they're well formed, then it's great, and if not, then it's like false. <laughs> <laughs> and in Python bytecode, there are jump instructions. And this is a really fundamental thing, because jump instructions are how you implement things like loops and if statements. The compiler says, now jump back and do these instructions again, or skip these instructions under certain circumstances. Those are Ha <laughs> ha 